Hi, I'm David Ditzler, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Shapeoko CNC milling machine with the Quiet Cut DC spindle and also the Tiny G controller. The purpose of this video is to show you how to connect the Tiny G controller with the Quiet Cut spindle and to the rest of the electronics needed for this upgrade. We will also cover how to control the spindle with TGFX by stopping and starting it and changing the speed all within the free software. The Tiny G is a great option for controlling most do-it-yourself CNC devices, either if you are building your first machine or upgrading an existing one. Comparing the Tiny G to the G-Shield in Arduino, you still get a compact package that can be driven via USB with the free software. In addition, you also get four motor drivers instead of three, a separate PWM control for a spindle, eight inputs for homing, limit switches, or other uses, and its own microcontroller all on one board. Comparing the Tiny G to other popular controllers, such as the Gecko G540, you still have the same amount of stepper drivers, but with more inputs and outputs, and it has its own microprocessor on board. This means you can drive it directly from a USB port and don't have to rely on a parallel port or other dedicated software package to stream the G-code. This can save you hundreds of dollars in additional software and hardware. Before we get started with the build, you are going to need a few items from Inventables to complete the upgrade. These include a 48 volt DC power supply, a 24 volt power supply, a quiet cut spindle, a power cord, and a speed controller. Additionally, you will also need a few more items, such as some two conductor wire, heat shrink tubing or crimp connectors, and a power strip. A few standard tools, such as a soldering iron and solder, wire stripper, wire cutter, screwdrivers, and a multimeter will come in handy as well. As an overview, the 48 volt power supply will send power to the speed controller. The speed controller will send power to the spindle. The spindle will be turned on and off via standard G-code commands within the software. For this to happen, we'll send a PWM signal from the Tiny G to the speed controller to start the spindle and control the speed. Now that we have the big picture, let's dig in and get to work. The first step is to extend the motor wires to the spindle. Measure how long you want the wires, making sure to leave room for them to pass through the drag chain and get to where you will mount the rest of the electronics. I like to solder on the new wire and secure with heat shrink for a solid connection. Next, check the input voltage switch of the 48 volt power supply and make sure it is set to your local voltage. I had to switch mine to 110 volts. Next, cut off the end of the power cord and wire it up to the power supply. In the US, Green is earth, white is neutral, and black is load. Cut a length of two conductor wire to wire the output side of the power supply to the speed controller. On this power supply, there are three terminals for each positive and negative. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as the polarity is correct. I like to insert the wires on the left side of the screw so when you tighten the screws, it tends to pull the wires into the terminal instead of pushing them out. The two conductor wire carrying the 48 volts from the power supply needs to be connected to the speed controller. Use the terminal block labeled AC and DC in. The circuitry on the speed controller does not care about the polarity for the input. Now you can also connect the spindle motor wires to the terminals on the output of the speed controller. Polarity does matter on the output side, so hook red to positive and black to negative. Because we are using the PWM or pulse width modulation terminals on the speed controller, move the jumper to the right position, closest to the PWM terminals. Also remove the potentiometer, as we will be controlling the spindle speed via software. The next step is to wire the Tiny G PWM output to the speed controller. Use some more two conductor wire for this, making sure to connect the positive PWM terminal on the Tiny G to the positive terminal on the speed controller, and the same for the negative. Next, attach the 24 volt power supply to the Tiny G. At this point, all the connections should be made. The next step is to test our work. Please make sure your quiet cut spindle is securely mounted. The collet is tight and does not have a cutting bit installed. 
Also make sure that both your 48 volt power supply for the speed controller and the 24 volt power supply for the Tiny G are connected to the same power strip. This way with one switch we can power up both devices at once. Then connect a USB cable from the Tiny G to the computer. Switch on the power strip to power up the system. The 48 volt power supply will have a green light when it is powered. The Tiny G should also have a power light. Now install TGFX. After it is installed, launch it and configure it to the shape OGO by loading the settings. To do this, first scan for the USB port, then hit the connect button. Once you are connected, switch to the machine settings tab. Then on the right hand side of the screen, click the shape OCO config file. Once it is highlighted, click the load button near the bottom of the screen. That configures the default hardware settings for the Tiny G. If you have any questions about this, please refer to the previous blog post for Tiny G settings. The link is included in the description below. Once we have confirmed the stepper motor's directions and axes, we have a few more configurations to update to use the PWM control with the Tiny G to control the spindle. Please cut and paste or type in the following commands to update the Tiny G. After you have added the settings, you will have to power cycle the Tiny G to have the new settings updated. Reconnect TGFX to Tiny G after it has rebooted. You should be able to confirm the computer is connected by typing dollar sign dollar sign and press enter. After that, switch to the commands tab and type in M03 and press enter to start the spindle and M05 and enter to stop the spindle. Once the spindle is turned on, you should be able to adjust the speed of the spindle by typing S3000 for example or S8000 for the maximum speed. I think you're really going to like this upgrade for your shape OCO. Having a quiet spindle along with the increased accuracy and being able to use a variety of different size cutting bits really makes a huge difference. Let's give it a quick air cut test. Having complete spindle control as well as homing and limit switchability really takes the shape OCO away from a hobby machine and brings it closer to a production tool. Thank you for checking out this upgrade video and make sure to leave a comment if you found it useful and you would like to see more upgrade videos like this in the future.